So I think, well, first of all, I'm going to call Ruby forward. Ruby's, Ruby's first. So Ruby, you have an hour and a half. Ruby, oh. Wow. No, Ruby, you have two minutes. No, you have three, five. Okay. Okay? Okay. Go, go there. Oh, okay. Good morning, good morning, church family. It's good to be back. It's good to have you back. How'd you like my dress? I love it. It's wonderful. I have like a little wing here. But the chicken dance. Yeah, the, the African dance. But um, testimony. We have a lot for five minutes, so I'll cut it off. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, the first lesson I've learned is to make sure you hear the Holy Spirit and listen to your husband sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> okay, so first, yeah. First, the passport. Okay, so we have yellow fever shot. And they, you're supposed to have that in your passport. So like my logical thinking was telling me that, well, Ruby, you have the sticker on your passport, so you do, you do not need you know, the yellow fever certificate. So it was make, you know, it's logical enough. So I detached, I took the certificate off the passport and I left it at home. But before that, my husband told me like, well, you should just leave it there. Because it was stapled. So there it is. So I went to How many times did he tell you you should have it? <sighs> Do I have to come in? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so we went, in, we went to the airport and then all of them have the yellow, well, yellow, yellow fever certificate and then I didn't have mine. I was like, um, Oh no, but I have a sticker on my passport, so it makes a lot of trickle sense that I do not need a yellow thing. Because that was the requirement to get the, the, visa. the visa. I got the visa, so what's the use? So, my logical thinking. So, we went to the airport, and Pastor Donaldson was like, ah, he cannot enter to Ghana. And then, like, my heart starts like, boom, boom, boom. Lord, I'm at the airport, so I have the sticker again, I have the visa. So, I called my husband. And the first thing he said, like, I told you. <laughs> so listen to your husband sometimes. But um, yeah. And then I have more to, yeah, more to that. But um, God, it was God's really favor. So like there we prayed, like I prayed, like instantly. I didn't tell them like I was. So, but it's like, Lord, just a favor. Just one person, just that person. So we went into Ghana, and then I was like, um, I have my visa and my passport, so it doesn't make sense. And then this little guy said, like, do you have your, your, um, your certificate? But before that, we, we um, made a copy from you know, here in, in Minneapolis. So I have my copy, and um, so I told my husband to send it to me. So anyways, so I had it. And then, so when it was my turn to show my certificate, and then I was like, I have my certificate in my, in my purse, so I just, Grab it, and it took a little longer. Thank the Lord. And then she said, like, oh, you're with them? So yeah, just go, just go. I said, yes, Lord. Yeah. So he did not have to, you know, to check my certificate, which is a good really listen for me. So like, <laughs> listen to her husband. So like that I told you so, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so the one of the there's a lot that happened there, and it's so humbling. The one really that stuck to me, is that right word stuck? But um, during that round, round table with the pastors, the pastors round table. So like the moment I got there, so like it's, you know, it's a room. <clears throat> I, don't, I just, I don't know if it feels sad or my heart was just heavy. Because like you've seen each one of these pastors and then they have one in common. They want to obey God's call in their life. And then to me, like the, they have, um, like to me, like if you have the same God, if you follow the same call God has put in their lives, you, you face the same struggle. So like I, I, I look at each one of them, so some of them didn't talk at all, but some of them was talking about you know, like their struggle. And then like, um, what if it said that, you know, they have good members? But sometimes when God, you know, told the pastor to just say it, you know. 
Some people get hurt. But, you know, like they're just, I don't, this is just, this just me, I'm not a pastor, but I just felt for them. Like, you know, if you say it from, you know, what, what God tells you, and then they just leave the church or something like that, it hurts them. There are people, they, they, they love them, you know. I mean, God, Jesus loves them too, you know. But like to me, like, um, there was this one guy, you know, like one of the elders or whatever, you know, told him to just polish it. So where would you listen? And so I, I just listened to one of them, you know, like, and I felt the heart, like, you know, where are they, what are you going to do? Listen to the Holy Spirit or listen to God or be worried about, you know, what people might say. So like, to me, I said, Lord, um, just strength. And then people that left the church, it's not just here, it's not just, you know, here in the U.S., right. but all of them, it's all over the world. Yeah. They're all churches still, like, they're pastors, and they're like, they, they, like, how can they comfort each other? You know, like, they need each other, you know, to, to, to really encourage each other to just walk the walk, you know, God put in their path. So, like, we need, then they need us too. They need leaders. They need us to really see their vision, to see, like, what God, you know, is, is, is placing before them. They cannot do that on their own, but they, they need us. So, like, I know one of the pastors that says, um, just polish it, you know, because it, this, you know, like it hurts people or something, something like that. Like, truth hurts people. You know, I mean, love hurts. I mean, love, you know, is telling them the truth, you know. I mean, if they're listening to the Holy Spirit, you know, I mean, it, it should be convicting. So that's why I, you know, I mean, it was so privileged for me to be there and, and just sit there and just listen to each one of them. And, and they need prayers. They need encouragement. They need... They need us to like, you know, but, you know, they're back, you know, and try to like, yeah, keep going, keep, you know, keep, keep on keeping on. So um, that's just, you know, what struck me. And then I know was it in John 6, 66, you know, like when Jesus, you know, I mean, they left Jesus too, <laughs> you know. So I don't know about you, but, you know, they need our prayer. They yeah. need our love. They need our support. So that's, yeah. All right. Thank you. <laughs> all your faces <laughs> um like ruby said there's so much so much and i keep thinking like how how can i put this in a summary how can i you have to go on a trip somewhere sometime <laughs> you have to go <laughs> and everyone is different and every experience is different and all the people are different but god is still the same that's and, right and the enemy is still the same so I, I feel like like the whole time during the trip, you know, God just kept asking you repeatedly, do you trust me? Do you trust me? Do you trust me? Do you trust me? And of course the answer is yes, yes, I trust you, I trust you. But to see what he can do, he is our provision, he is our provider, he is our sustainer. We were taken care of. What we needed, we had. We were safe, even in some interesting traffic incidences we were safe <laughs> even when being pulled over by police several times we were given favor our driver was given his driver's license back after a while <laughs> and we were safe we were taken care of things that your body normally needs to have and do didn't need to have and do we were fine this woman here <laughs> prayed for the entire country of Ghana. I'm pretty sure. He sustained her. Yeah. He gave her a word for every single person that came up to her. She didn't just pray fluffy prayers for them. He showed her their heart. He showed her what he wanted to speak directly to her, to them. It was, it was amazing and an honor to just be able to stand there and hold her water. <laughs> but it wasn't her. Right. All right. It was the Holy Spirit yeah, amen. with us the whole time. Yeah. And there was no doubt through that whole trip. It wasn't any of us. Mm -hmm. We were just the vessels there to do what we needed to do when we needed to do it. Right. Um, the pastor's round table was, was awesome. Mm -hmm. to, to even be honored to be in that room with these pastors, sharing their hearts 
and their issues and and their wisdom with each other. And I just kept thinking, you know, who who am I? I'm nobody. I'm nobody. And yet I'm here in this seat in Ghana, in Africa, getting to absorb and learn and grow from these people who have invited me. Who am I? I'm nobody. But now we've been given insight. We've been given knowledge. We've been, we've been given responsibility mm -hmm. to bring to you because we have responsibility here also. Um, one, of the, one of the main things I think that we learned through the other pastors and through here and needing a team of support is our pastors need support. Their pastors need support. Our leaders need support. Um, there were, like she said, there were people who had been going to churches there that were just going to churches that finally gave their life to the Lord. Yeah, right. There are people here that are just coming to church because you're supposed to go to church. They don't know the Lord. They're not disciples. We need to be not taking everything and putting it on our pastor's shoulders. We have a responsibility just as much Amen. to share with the person sitting next to us, to share with our neighbor, to not assume that who they're listening to on the radio is speaking the truth to them. That who they're seeing on the internet is speaking the truth to them. Yeah, they know Jesus. Sure they do. Do they really? There were so many on the radio. Um, there's a lot of churches there. I don't know if they're part of the church, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, there was a preacher on the radio we heard traveling to one of the places. And it was all very feel good and do good. And if you do all these good things, you'll get all these blessings back. And he was even bragging, I've never paid for a hotel and I've never paid for this because I'm so good and I do all these good things. And so all these blessings come to me. He didn't mention Jesus Christ. He didn't mention that that is the only way. I'm going, they're being fed lies. They're being fed fluff. And we are here too. So, not here. No, no, not here. <laughs> in America. In America. Yeah. In the United States. Okay. You know all of the bombardment of everything else. So, I don't know. The worship there was obviously amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and Grandma, I don't know her real name. One of the older women at one of the churches. She had been to several of the churches, but we went to her church finally. And she had she made all of these dresses for all of us. So that was just so. So sweet. You could really feel their heart for the Lord and their thankfulness that we were there. And it was just, yeah. So if you, you want to know more, you have to go. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I promise I won't give a sermon. <laughs> you know, when Elijah was having troubles, you'll find this in 1 Kings 19. The Lord said, go to the mountain where I can speak to you. And he, uh, all of a sudden there was a strong wind mm -hmm. and then an earthquake, but God was not in them. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of gentle blowing. I will tell you, all four of us experienced that gentle blowing in Ghana. As the Lord spoke to us at different times, in different ways, through nature especially. This is like the first time where I've really experienced so much of the Lord speaking spiritual truths through nature. Um, you know, speaking to Ruby about what songs she should share. Speaking to Lori, giving her a picture of a bird that was caught in her room trying to get out. She shared up in a hole before the revival message. Um, you know, speaking to me about several things, but, but ants and the road we were on and how, you know, we need to walk that roadway of grace. Just amazing things. And as we spoke, um, these spiritual truths found in nature and related it to what Christ had to say, you could see the understanding come on the people's faces. And you know you know that you know that they are going home with something they can hang on to yeah. and will help them in their growth and in their walk. 
So just amazing. One of the ways that the Lord spoke through you, I don't know if you're going to the fishing net. Okay, good. I'm going to the fishing net because I'm here first. <laughs> so one, we were coming back from Almina, the slave castle, where all the slave trading was going, or some of the slave trading was going on there. And off to the right was this group of men and women, mostly men on the lines, but then some women waiting. And what they were doing was pulling in fish from the fishing net. The net had to be out of maybe a mile? Yeah, when we first saw it. Yeah, and so she's like, Emmanuel, stop the car, stop the car. <laughs> and he's like, oh, what's wrong? So he pulls over and she says, we have to get out. We have to go see. And so, of course, you know, she might be almost 83, but when something hits her, she runs like a 20 year old. And so the three of us cannot catch her. Just want you to know that. So she bolted out of the car and Emmanuel's trying to lock the car and then trying to follow and, and not even he can catch up and he was 26. So she went over and she said, Emmanuel, ask them if we can help pull the nets in. So of course they were thrilled. And so she gets on the line, you'll see a, uh, pictures on Facebook, and she's pulling with the men. Heave ho, heave ho. It was just amazing to see the teamwork. And the Lord quickened her when we were in Tama to use that illustration and to relate it to many are called, but few are chosen. Mm -hmm. Because that net is going to bring in a lot of undesirable fish mm -hmm. along with the good fish. Mm -hmm. And as she gave that illustration and she was pantomiming it out, the senior pastor from that church runs up behind her and he joins her. Oh. So of course I ran over there and I joined them. And then the girls were not going to be outdone or left out. So then they ran over and joined us. And so as we acted it out, we know mm -hmm. that the body there at Tema Ghana will never forget that many are called, but few are chosen. And we need to strive to be of the chosen. So just amazing. Um, the moment that probably impacted me the most was at the second women's conference. There, throughout the whole trip, was such a hunger to know Christ, such a hunger to go deeper, such a hunger and an ability to receive. You know, when we're hungry, it helps us to receive what's given. There was such a respect to authority. Yeah. So we went to this second women's conference, and as Pastor shared earlier, the prayer line never let up. That just did, even though she said, don't come unless God tells you to. You know, people wait. They might think that God told them to later, or they're seeing what's happening. People are being delivered. People are being transformed. You know, not at pastor's hands, not because we're there, but because the Holy Spirit yeah, of Jesus Christ is right. there. Yeah. And he knows what their need is, and he knows if they need to be delivered. He mm -hmm. knows if they need to have a word spoken that will bring refreshment or correction or, or whatever. So this prayer line, it, it was forever. And we really were coming to the end. It was the final six plus two. <laughs> and I hear one of the pastors that was there, a woman pastor from a village, she had her entire church there. And each one of them got prayer. But she stood next to me the entire time. She was not going to miss out on what God was doing. So she stood next to me. And at one point, a young gal came up and spoke to her. Now, normally I would just pass that off, but I just knew, you know, that quiet whisper. God's in the quiet whisper. He says, ask her. I mean, maybe he didn't even say it. I just knew I needed to ask her. So I asked the woman pastor, what did the girl want? Did she want prayer? And she said, yes, she did. But I told her, mommy is too tired. And so, no, she has to wait. She cannot be prayed for. And I, I just knew, I said, I will ask pastor if she will pray for this young woman. And so uh, pastor, you know, she's tired, but she's like, I can't 
Jesus would not have ever stopped right. ministering to someone who really wanted and needed ministry. And so she doesn't give up, even if she's hungry, even if she's thirsty, even if she's tired. She doesn't give up because it's the Holy Spirit in her working. And so she said, yes, I will pray for her. So I went and got the young girl. And she looked at me like, what are you doing? I said, did you want prayer? She said, yes. I said, come now. And so we put her in front of the six plus two. <laughs> because it was urgent. Mm -hmm. It was urgent. And so as she knelt down, now the music was really loud, so I couldn't hear much of what was going on. But when pastor said, some of these people have been in church their whole lives, <laughs> this girl was one of them. She said to me, this girl has been in church her whole life, but doesn't have a relationship with God. And so she led her to the Lord. Here's what I want to say. What if I hadn't led her? What if I hadn't asked pastor? Mm -hmm. What if I hadn't listened to the Lord and right. thought it was my own intuition? Mm -hmm. What if pastor would have said, no, I'm too tired, we're done. What if? Mm -hmm. And we have to think about that as we walk through life. Mm -hmm. What if I don't do what that gentle voice is asking me to do? Who is going to not know the Lord? And so I'm going to leave that with you, and now you can join me in this struggle mm -hmm. of always listening so that we don't have to say, what if? Amen. 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 Pastor. Amen. It is an amazing thing how the Holy Spirit works. You have to excuse me using my shears, but somehow I've misplaced my glasses in all of it. So for now, it'll have to be with the cheaters. You know, I know people that travel to third world countries to minister. I know many of them. One of them was here while I was gone, Ian Peters travels. But I always ask them, who are you taking with you to train? Who, who, are, who are you discipling that they can learn how to go into a third world country and minister to those that need ministry? And every one of them that I know that travels is not taking anybody. Maybe one, once in a while. But you see, it's, that's what we do when we disciple is prepare everybody for whatever God has called you Amen. to do. Not everybody's called to go to a third world country. You can go down Tom Walker. Oh, <laughs> I did not say that was a third world country, but I said or, or Hackensack or anywhere and minister. And if you want to learn, if you just want to do that, we're going to be doing that sometime here pretty soon. So, uh, what happened here to my head? There we go. All I can say is, being 82, soon to be 83, I, I do get tired, and I can't stand that long. I can stand at the pulpit because I'm moving around the pulpit. And it's, there's somehow the ministry is not like here. It's so different. And Marcy has told me in the past, she hasn't this time, but she said, you're different at home than you are in this country. There's, I'm not saying there's not freedom here, so don't, please don't misinterpret anything I'm saying. If there's not freedom here, that's my fault, nobody else's. But there's just, they're just so hungry. They just want to hear, they want to learn, they want to grow and they want to pull from me. You know, she used the term mommy. They called me mommy all the time, mom because that's what they do out of respect for older women, and I guess they decided I was older. <laughs> but, and I have a dress like that too, it was made for me, which you notice I'm not wearing today. There's a reason. I look like two houses in it. I look like a duplex in it, for sure. And I put it on yesterday to see, and I mean, I have lots of dresses from, from African countries, and I have another dress from, from uh, Ghana, but I, didn't take the time to look for it. But I couldn't bring myself to do that. I noticed they don't even look like a small house. They just look good. Terrific. It must have something to do with their youth and beauty. I bet. 
Then <laughs> 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 <And> I, <ask, laughs> I ask you, I have to, it's for those of you who don't know, this is my baby sister. And so they're up spending time with us over the weekend. And that's enough out of you, baby sister. Okay? Her name is Lindy. You can talk to them afterward. Don't ask her anything about how we grow up. Whatever you do. So, um, for me, just being there is, I feel like I'm alive again when we're there. I feel like there's something happens there. And the Holy Spirit moves so powerfully. And I think it's because the people are hungry that I feel totally different. I don't know how, even how to explain it. They're so hungry and they pull from you. They pull from you. It's an awesome thing. Uh, for me, <clears throat> the, the people that come to the Lord who've been in church for a long time who've never had come to the Lord, that, that probably is the, the biggest thing. The, the elderly, the very elderly lady that was 89 years old that prayed for me was, that was, that was just a plus. I, I think I need to bring her here. She was just so, she was so beautiful. Um, there were deliverances, uh, which, are, which happen spontaneously. It is, you, know, you know what, the whole, when the Holy Spirit moves, he doesn't take hours. He doesn't take, I, you don't need to pray all night and fast. If you have the Holy Spirit, you just touch people. If they, they just, whoo, they're spinning around. They're pulling other pastors and trying. And there they didn't, they, we've discovered that they wouldn't let the people fall. They would hold them up. And so we had to teach them, no, let them go down. Let the Holy Spirit finish his work. Just stop and don't let them get hurt. And so they learned because they were, some of them were spinning and the pastor, two pastors are trying to hold on to them. And they're all spinning and they nearly knocked me over. And I said, let go of them, please, before somebody gets hurt. So, but the Holy Spirit does it all. It's not me, it's not the girls, it's not even our prayers. It's the Holy Spirit doing Amen. everything. It's not my hands that heal, it's none of that. It's, it's the Holy Spirit. It's an awesome thing. And, you just have to go sometime into, into a third world. It's wonderful. And they're so excited to have you come. Mm -hmm. They just love it when you come. So that's, that's all I'm going to say today. Uh, I, had a perfect, I had the perfect team. Amen. The perfect team. It's just, they don't, they don't, I don't have to say anything. Do this or do that. Uh, contrary to popular belief, I do not make them do things. <laughs> They, they know, Marcy watches, and then it may, might help them, but they learn, and they grow, and they're so willing, and they'll do anything. Standing there holding a bottle of water for me for two hours, in which I get to get a sip out of once in a while. It's awesome. God is good. Amen? Amen. One of the things that we did, that I did teach in, in ministering there was, okay, my God. My God. My God. My God. Is an awesome God. Yes. So they learned, they all learned as we went around to all say, I'd say, my God, and they'd all go, my God, my God. Helping people know it's your God. It's not the right, God of the personal. Americans. It's not the right. God, it's a personal God. Yeah. And they, so it got to be fun. They'd come up to me then and, and say, my God. <laughs> There's one man, Pastor Sonny. Sun, Sunday or Sunday. Sunday, some, I, I can't remember. But at, we went to his church, prayed for him. And he was so sweet. Then he went to all the rest of the meetings with us. And he would come up to me when I was praying for people. When they're all Solomon. done. That was Solomon. Okay. Solomon. Okay. Anyway, he'd come up to me when I was, and when I was done praying for people. And he'd kneel down and say, Mommy, just touch me one time. Just touch me one time. He'd come every time. Mommy, just touch me one time. With a big smile. I just touch him. He said, God is good. God yes. is good. Yeah. Well, Thank you for praying for us. We need all the prayers we can get. And when I start there at the very first place, where I went to or wherever we were, then my first thought to myself is, as I'm looking around at all the people, I'm a worm. Yeah. I know nothing. I know, I know nothing. I'm just here because God said to come. And now, God, you're gonna have to do something because they're expecting something. And uh, so it's not, you know, and sometimes I said, it's not the great Americans who have come to teach you how to do anything. We just come to share the word of God and pray for you. Mm -hmm. So this is Independence Day. 
And I'm going to cut my message here because we, we talked about more important things than some of this. This is Independence Day. What a day for us. The, the, this is a quote. The pilgrims believed Jesus Christ was their rock of safety. I recognize we must be cautious in claiming that God is on our side. But I think it's all right to keep asking if we're on his side. There you go. Amen. Ronald yes. Reagan said that. Yes. It's good to ask, are we on his side? Yes. Not is he on our side or to do what we want. Mm -hmm. America's a crazy place, in yes. case you haven't noticed lately. It's a, I, I can't believe where we are in America today. No. It's a crazy place. There's a lot of things going on. Here's what somebody wrote. Only in America, only in America can pizza get to your house faster than an ambulance. <laughs> only, in your only in America are there handicapped parking places in front of a skating rink. <laughs> only in America do drugstores make the sick walk all the way to the back to get their prescriptions, <laughs> while the healthy people can get some kind of lotion right up in front. Yes. Yes. It's funny, when you think That's about awesome. it, I thought about our drugstore. <laughs> Only in America do people order double cheeseburgers, large fries, and a Diet Coke. Yes. <laughs> Only in America do we leave cars worth thousands of dollars in the driveway and fill our garage with junk. Yeah. Isn't that true? Yeah. Only in America do we use answering machines to screen calls and have call waiting so we won't miss a call from someone we didn't want to talk to in the first place. <laughs> Only in America do we buy hot dogs in packages of 10 and buns in packages of 8. <laughs> you know, think about these things sometimes. Only in America do we have Braille on drive-up ATM machines. <laughs> but you know what? I still believe America is the greatest country yes. in the world. I, that's, I'm so glad I was born in the USA of America. Praise God. I've ministered in over 30 countries, over half of them third world countries, where everyone wants to come to America. None of those countries do I want to go to to live. Right. Yeah. Right. We have everything here. We have so much here. We are so spoiled. Yes. It's unbelievable. Yeah. It's so spoiled. I feel blessed by God to have been born and raised in the good old USA. Mm -hmm. What a blessing it is we have here. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Our founding fathers laid the groundwork for the freedom that we enjoy today, and our freedom didn't come cheap. But sometimes what I hear is like, it meant nothing. The cost that our founders paid meant nothing. There are some who want to obliterate the very idea of God out of America. Sin has disgraced God's name and our nation. I, an unbelieving world is shouting out its message. It's loud and clear. The believing world, you don't hear so much from. It's kind of quiet. If God lives in you, he ought to show through. He ought to shine forth wherever you go. People ought to know that you must have God. There's something different about you. Or they come up to you and say, there's something different about you. What's different about you? It's because of him. It's all because of him when you know Jesus. Psalm 33, 12 says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Amen. We are blessed. Our forefathers claimed this nation for God, and we need to reclaim it. Amen. Amen. For God. The Apostle Paul gave us several things we can do to keep America great. 1 Timothy 2, verse 1 through 4. 1 Timothy 2, verses 1 through 4. First of all, then... <coughs> I urge that entreaties and prayers, petitions, thanksgivings be made on behalf of all men, all men, for kings and all who are in authority, in order that, there's a reason for it, the purpose of it is, so that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. This is good and acceptable in the sight of the Lord, who desires all men, to be saved. How many men? All. All. 
Whose responsibility does that lie with now? Us. Us. To, to preach the gospel, to talk about Jesus Christ, to lead people to Jesus Christ. Who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth? For there is one God and one mediator also between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I was looking, I spent some time looking up the groundwork for freedom we enjoy that has been uh, given to us over the last 200, and I have it here someplace, the last 228 years. We enjoy our freedom today because of our founding fathers. They, they were very wise men. Yes, we know they didn't do everything right. You know what, this is not a perfect nation. I'm not saying it is by far. We've made a lot of mistakes. We will probably continue making mistakes. We are human beings, but we're still the best out there, our nation. Our fathers, our brothers and sisters, our sons and daughters have done to get and to preserve this freedom. Our freedom didn't come cheap. The patriots fought and died to give us our freedom of religion. A freedom of religion. We don't have to worship. We don't have to be religious. But we have a freedom. And that's why they came here. There's a difference between freedom of religion and freedom from religion. Are we Christian nation today? That's a question I'm asking you. Are we a Christian nation today? Probably not. Was this nation founded on Christian principles? Absolutely. Yes. yes. Absolutely is the right answer. The first settlers of America came here to express their religious faith for freedom of worship. Mm -hmm. The pilgrims who came to Plymouth Rock on the Mayflower wrote the Mayflower Compact in 1620. Listen to what they said. In the name of God, amen, having undertaken for the glory of God and for the advancement of the Christian faith, do solemnly and mutually in the presence of God covenant and combine ourselves together. Wow. Wow, they did that kneeling yes. and praying together. 23 years later, the New England Confederation was written. Listen to what our founding fathers wrote then. Whereas we all came into these parts with one and the same end and aim, namely to advance the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ and to enjoy the liberties of gospel in purity and faith, peace. Amen. What do we have today? Chaos. Chaos. Amen. Chaos. A group of people who are trying to eliminate and exterminate not only the word God from public view, but also to eliminate the very idea of God. <clears throat> right. to, to eliminate the very idea of God. This is much different idea than our founding fathers had. Right. Much different. Listen to what the framers of our Constitution wrote in 1776. We, therefore, the representatives of the United States of America in general Congress assembled, appealing to the supreme judge of the world for the rest restitute of our intentions and for the support of this declaration with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence. We mutually pledge our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. What do we mutually pledge? You don't have to answer that. What do we mutually pledge? Are we there? Are we, are we, are we in that, are we there? I, I think it's sad to say in America, no, we're not there. Some of us might be there, but that's only a tiny few, like, like Russ said, the remnant. Then we have to make some changes. When the first Continental Congress met and were debating about how the Declaration of Independence should be written, Ben Franklin got up and said, gentlemen, if it is true that not one single petal from any flower falls to the ground without escaping God's attention, will the distress of this nation go unheeded? Ooh. Wow, that works for today. Yes. We are in distress. Let us therefore determine to seek his face. Yeah, this is a word to our church. This is a word to us. We need to seek his face. Mm -hmm. After having said that, 56 signers of the Declaration of Independence went to their knees and began to pray and seek God's wisdom. Can you imagine what would happen today 
If that were to happen in our Congress, in our Supreme Court today, and they said, Almighty God, what do you want for this nation? Almighty God, what do you want? Not what we want, what do you want? Yes. yes. Someone I have learned who is no longer a part of our church has been telling people that I am controlling everybody here. That we have no choices. We're way too much politically involved. Maybe we're not enough involved. Yes. Amen. Is Amen. probably more to the point. But there's deception out there. Mm -hmm. Do you realize the price that our founders paid for your independence mm -hmm. and my independence and the freedoms we enjoy? <laughs> they paid a huge price. So let me tell you some, just a little bit of it. Because we're just kind of refreshing our memory. Five were captured and tortured by the British before they died. Twelve had their homes ransacked and burned to the ground. Thomas McKean had to constantly move his family because of British harassment. He served in Congress without pay and died in poverty. Thomas Nelson urged General Washington to destroy his home when it was taken over by the British and used as a command post. And he died bankrupt. John Quincy Adams, the second president, speaking of the Declaration of Independence. From the time of the Declaration of Independence, the American people were bound by the laws of God and the laws of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which they all acknowledge as the root of their conduct. We all come together to obey the word of God. George Washington, in his farewell address, do not let anyone claim tribute of American patriotism if they even attempt to remove religion Very from important. politics. Mm, wow. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah. We've come along, as, as my, a former pastor of mine and, and a man who's on my board, my ministry board, said to me here a few years ago, I, was, I ministered at our, our ministerial organization at their annual conference and I was speaking in, and he came up to me afterward, very quietly, said to me, boy, oh, you've come a long way, baby. <laughs> he told me after, he said, I couldn't say that to just anyone. <laughs> they wouldn't understand. But it's the changes that only God can do, yes. that the God, only God can make in us. Um, Patrick Henry, it cannot be emphasized too strongly or too often that this great nation was founded not by religionists, but by Christians, not on a religion, but on the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. It gets me excited. These men and hundreds more paid a price to give us a nation built upon the principles of God mm -hmm. and the foundation of Jesus Christ. The foundation has been laid. Can we do any less <coughs> but pray for America? Mm -hmm. The church, the call of God, God's people need to pray for America and for our leaders. How effective are your prayers, do you think? Well, the Bible says in James 5, 16, the effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. Satan's chief concern is to keep Christians like you and me from praying. Right. Someone once said, the devil trembles when he sees the weakest Christian on his knees. Right. Amen. Do you realize that the very framework of our nation's government was patterned after the Bible? We have three branches of government, executive, mm -hmm. legislative, le legislative and judicial. Executive, legislative, and judicial. This was a new concept for national government in the world which they, in which they live. Where did they get this idea? Bible. Oh yes, from the Bible. What, where? Isaiah 33, verse 22 is where it comes from. Isaiah 33, verse 22. For the Lord is our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. The Lord go. is our king. He will save us. Yeah. Judge, that's the judicial branch. Lawgiver, that's the legislative branch. King, that's the executive branch. 
our founding fathers looked to the word of God to organize the government of our nation. Wow. Yeah. They laid the foundation and we're supposed to build upon it. And yet right now, overall it's being torn, trying right. to be torn That's down. Right. Nobody wants any order. When I came to this church, there was no order. All those 13 years ago, there wasn't any order. Everybody just did their thing and that's the way we went. So it took quite a while to bring some order to the church. God is a God of order. Amen. Yes. But some say that's control. <clears throat> our founding fathers looked to the word of God to organize the government of our nation. They laid the foundation where to build on it. In the original intent of our founding fathers, many of our leaders are trying to take not only God out of our nation, but the very mention of God, period. Some want to take in God we trust, yeah. off our money. Some are trying to take under God, out of the Pledge of Allegiance of the American flag. <coughs> Some are trying to take the Ten Commandments out of public places. Some are trying to even eliminate the mention of God. The World War II monument uh, dedicated in the Washington, D.C. on the monument is a quote from President Franklin D. Roosevelt used, that he used under the attack on Pearl Harbor. But they left out a major part on the quote, the last four words, on purpose. Yeah. So help us God. Yeah. Yeah. Where are we going, church? Yeah. She's not leaving because she's upset. She has something to do. <laughs> she has to go to it. There's not a lot we can do about the movement to eliminate even the mere mention of God in our government, but there is something we can do to keep sin from dishonoring his name and our nation. Proverbs 14.34 says, Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a disgrace to any people. Sin has disgraced God's name and our nation. Take a look at marriages and the divorce rate. 50% even among Christians. Teenage pregnancies half of which end up in abortions. 70% of the 12 to 18 year olds who claim to be Christians are sexually active. Since 1976, child abuse is up 240%. Pornography, sexual abuse, broken homes, abuse of power, sin has disgraced our nation. But there's something we can do about that. Amen. First Timothy 2, 2. Pray for kings and all who are in authority, in order that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. How can we keep America great? Pray, live righteous lives. Mm -hmm. The unbelieving world is shouting out a message. Gays and lesbians are speaking out. Gay marriages are being performed and our leaders are listening to them. Mm -hmm. The abortionists are speaking out. Abortion is still legal and our highest leaders in the country are agreeing. The liberals are speaking out. Family values have become a laughing stock and our leaders are listening to them. The sad truth is the Christians in America are the majority, yeah. but we are doing very little to speak out as a witness to the Lord. Yeah. We are content to sit in our homes, shake our heads at the direction the country is headed. You should hear me at home in front of the television. I'm sure I'm not the only one. What? You're doing what? Do any of the rest of you do that? Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. Turn that off. <laughs> I understand. I knew I liked you. <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable. You hear these things and think, what would Linda, what would our parents think if they came back today? Oh, my goodness. They've been long gone. What would Jesus say? What yeah. would you? But we know what he would say. Yeah. Uh-huh. He would weep. Where is Jesus today? Here. Yeah. Here. Are we letting him shine? Right. Are we letting him shine for it? We are content to sit in church and say amen to the sermon. <laughs> By the way, I hear that in Africa all the time. I hardly hear it here. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Do very little outside the church to be a witness for the Lord. God expects us to use that freedom that our founding fathers made possible. So here's a little story. One Sunday, as they drove home from church, there was a little girl named Susie. And she said, Mommy, there's something the preacher said this morning that I don't understand. 
What's that, honey? Well, he said that God is bigger than we are. He said that God's so big, he could hold the whole world in his hand. Is that true? The mother replied, yes, honey, that's true. But mommy, he also said that God comes to live inside us when we trust Jesus to be our Lord and Savior. Is that true too? The mother assured little Susie that what the pastor said was true. Then mommy, why don't we tell anybody about Jesus? There you go. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Amen. Just a point. That's right. Shine forth that light of Christ who lives within each one of us. Let him manifest himself through you. Let Jesus shine. Let others see that Jesus is the only hope for America. Mm -hmm. yes. The only hope for eternity in heaven. Amen. So in conclusion, Psalm 33, 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Yes. When our nation and Christians cease to look to Jesus as Lord, we will cease to be blessed by God. Our forefathers claimed this nation for God. We need to reclaim it for God. Amen? Amen. We need to reclaim it for God. Amen. So let's move in that direction. Let's say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord.